In this Grasshopper tutorial, we want to use the second version of the Stella plugin and model something like this, which is a Voronoi expansion. And you can see that I can increase the number of the counts and restart the process. And again, uh, we can change the seed to produce different models. And we can stop it here and uh, get the output here in the mesh. As you can see here, I can just produce the mesh and this is how you can use uh, this example file to produce a mesh like this. Uh, the second part which I will also explain in this tutorial is how uh, we're going to use the Stella for a collision, just a simple collision with uh, stars. So it's going to be basically like this, a series of spheres. Let me just turn this off and we're going to use the simulation so they're going to collide and then find their location between each other which is finally at the end we can pause the uh, simulation and have the results so uh, this tutorial is going to be uh, easy with step by steps of how you can use the stella plugin and before we get started uh, welcome to our youtube channel remember to subscribe because we have weekly tutorials and uh, if you're new to grasshopper uh, you can watch this playlist up here it's related to uh, grasshopper why you have to uh, why you have to use grasshopper uh, why it's the best for uh, parametric design and also some basics and if you also want to uh, learn grasshopper more advanced we have a course i will also put the playlist up here so you can see the lessons and enroll in our course okay let's get started from scratch uh, what i want to do here is to go to the vector section and in the grid uh, I want to produce a series of random points. So in the grid section, you can see that we have the populate. We have used this before for war noise and those things. Uh, what I want to do is to use this populate 2D to make a population of random points in a region, which is a rectangle. Uh, we can simply give a rectangle to this. So maybe we can go to the uh, curve and in the primitive, we can find a rectangle here which is a simple rectangle, give the rectangle to the region. And by controlling the X size and the Y size, uh, let me put the bifocals plug in so you can see the commands. OK, uh, you can see that the X size and the Y size is the domain. So if I look at here, you can see it's a domain. So it's like minus two to two. And what we have to do is to give this a number slider. If you give a number slider to a domain, it's going to be from zero to that number, okay? So that's going to make it easier. I'm going to give a number slider to this. And we can also just control C, control V to make it a rectangle instead of a square. And here we go. Okay, the second input is the count, so we can control maybe from 30 to 300. Uh, so I'm going to just control this count of the population. And the seed is a random point, a random number, which you can control those points. Let's give it from 0 to maybe 1,000. That's going to give you 1,000 different random points okay which you can control uh, later okay now we have the base points and what we want to do here i want to show you how you can simply use the stella version do uh, version 2 plugin uh, to make the collisions that's really easy uh, after installing it from the file special folder and the component folder be sure to uh, right click on the file so if i just find the stella right click and select the properties and if you see an unblock here, uh, be sure to unblock the file and then restart your Rhino Grasshopper. So maybe some of those who install this and uh, many plugins in Grasshopper have this problem. So be sure to unblock your files. Okay, let's go to the uh, Stella. And this is the second version. You can see it's a little bit easier. I want to show you how you can use it uh, to produce this collision of points. Uh, for the conversion, the first part, I'm going to use this point to star. That means we want to convert a series of points to stars. That's really easy. Instead of using the Big Bang 
I'm going to use this point to stuff. Okay, uh, you have to give it a lifespan. So the lifespan is uh, the life of those points which are going to move. Uh, if you just give it a zero, it's not going to move anyway. So I'm going to give it maybe 300. Uh, we can increase that if we want a more lifespan. So this is the lifespan of those points. And then you have to give it a reset. So we can just say a button. We can connect it here. And by clicking this, it's going to reset uh, the simulation we have with the stars. Okay, the output here is a star object. And I'm going to show you the most and the best and the easiest way you can use this to work with points. It's similar to Kangaroo, but uh, you can see how it's going to work. So if you go to the loop section, you can see that we have uh, two parts, deconstruct and reconstruct. So we're going to use this deconstruct and reconstruct to work with these points. So the stars are going to go from here. Uh, be sure to connect the point to the point. So this is going to make a complete loop and uh, give us the output. And now what we have to do is to produce a vector. So uh, the most simple one which I want to use in this example is to star collide. So assume that, let's just give this a sphere from the surface menu to the points and maybe a radius of like 15. The sphere, the nerve sphere is a little bit slower. So what I prefer to use is to go to the uh, mesh and in the primitive use the mesh sphere. Mesh sphere is uh, faster. So let's just give this to the base. You can see how fast it is compared to the nerves one and give it to the radius and decrease the radius. Okay. So what we want to do is to assume that these are uh, spheres and they're going to collide. So that's really easy when you want to use it with Stella. I'm going to go to the forces and use this star collide. And the point has to come from this loop. So here we come. Uh, we bring the point to the point and the vector to the vector. So this is a simple force. Always you can use these forces. For example, you can say gravity or maybe, for example, let me show you a seeking force. Again, you can give this point a target and a factor and then bring that back to the vector. So remember, you can always use this uh, point to point and vector to vector for the forces. Okay, now I want to give this a radius and maybe uh, give this number slider so you can see what it means and increase this. Okay, so what it does, it's going to loop this and for the best results, I'm going to connect a point to the point here to see the results and give this to the base of the spheres. Okay, let's just reset this. Uh, and you can see that they're going to move a little bit. I'm going to increase this lifespan. And you can see that by increasing and decreasing, it's going to uh, work. Uh, if I increase this number, you can see they are moving, but I can't just move this number slider. So what I want to do is to give a timer to this point to start. That's all you have to do. You have to give a timer to this and a button. So I'm going to just type a timer and put that to 20 milliseconds and say okay restart or run this point to star and then i'm going to reset it okay so you can see that this is going to help us to move these points and uh we can just turn off everything and only turn on the spheres and just hit the button let's increase the lifespan and run it okay and what I want to do is to increase also the radius. That's going to help us. Again, restart. And you can see that they are going to collide and stop at a place. You can always double click the timer to pause this and get the results. Okay, that was the basics. But what I want to do is to teach you how you can use this points instead of a sphere to produce that Voronoi mesh. So uh, the first part is to uh, convert this into a mesh. Uh, what I want to do is uh, go to the mesh and select this 
Delaunay mesh. Okay, the Delaunay mesh. We have talked this uh, about this before. Let me just put a tutorial up here if you want to watch more about it. And if I give this points, the plane is default is an X Y plane. Let's just hit Control M so you can see the mesh. And let's just run this. You can see that it's going to give you a uh, Delaunay mesh. The Delaunay mesh is a good mesh for producing the water noise. Uh, by installing the Weaverwood plugin, uh, you can see that it has a great tool called Weaverbird's Dual Graph. Okay, I'm going to give this to the meshes, and here we go. Just turn this off. And you can see that this is going to give you uh, the results. The dual mode, you can see it has a zero and a one. The default is zero. If you give it a one, uh, it's based on the mesh you do. It's going to just give you different results, but for now it's just similar. So if I just restart this and run it again, you can see it's expanding. Those water noise cells are expanding, and then we can just pause this. Okay, now we want to uh, convert these uh, lines, and which you can see here, which is the polylines, into a complete mesh. Again, uh, there is a plugin which I will put here. You have to go to our website to download it. It's Fatten. Uh, after installing this, putting it in the file special folder, component folder, remember to you have to unblock it if you don't see it. Uh, you can see it in the primitive, the Fatten. It's really easy. Just you have, uh, just you, what you have to do is to give those lines and the polylines to the skeleton. Uh, let's just turn everything off and give this a thickness so that's really easy the fatten component is cool you can always use it to produce something like that and what i want to do here is to convert that into a smooth mesh so again i'm going to go to the viverbird plugin and use this catmull clark uh, subdivision uh, which you can see here in the sub d and give that mesh to it and give it maybe uh, a three level so the maximum is the three level and you can see the mesh if I hit control M you don't see the lines and if I connect uh, from the display uh, custom preview to this and give it a swatch I usually give it a swatch and maybe here give it a color you can see that by increasing the thickness, it's going to give you a complete, beautiful mesh. So that's really easy. Uh, anyway, what you have to do is to run the timer, restart it, and you can see that those meshes are producing here. And we can also decrease the number, decrease the number here, and again restart it here. And when we are good to go, we just pause this and bake the meshes. Okay, so you can just make the meshes and because those edges are on, let's just go to the rendered mode and you can see that this is a mesh. You can just send this to other softwares. Okay, that was the tutorial of how uh, you can use this uh, to produce a complete uh, Voronoi expansion mesh from the Stella uh, version 2 plugin. I hope you like it and it's useful for you. If you have any comments, any uh, solutions for this, you can also uh, try working with other forces and use that. Uh, I'm going to maybe in the future give you more tutorials on the Stella uh, version 2 plugin, which the Parametric House team has developed. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day and see you next time.